Hi kids, welcome back to Learn Forward and this is Anjana back with you on your platform. We are going to study computer book that is coding and computing skills by ultra learning and for grade 8 this is chapter number 1. Children, this is about computer networking and we are going to see third video of it. So in the previous videos, we have learned different types of networking. We have learned the advantages of networking also. Now moving ahead, we'll be learning about what are the disadvantages of networking and we'll also explore different type of protocols that are followed with the networking. So time to begin and here we go. First, we are going to learn what are disadvantages of networking. So basically, computer network is a very fast and convenient means of transferring and sending, sharing the information. But still there exist certain disadvantages of computer networking that are given here. So we are going to read them one after another. The first one is the cost of, of setting up the networking. When you go for the huge network, the cost of networking is high especially when large number of computers are connected and associated with each other. In that case, you require so many expensive devices like you want a server, you want routers, you need switches, hubs and other things are to be purchased. So that can be sometimes one uh, uh, obstacle for us whether our budget is up to that or not. So that's one of the disadvantage. Now when you come about the server breakdown, suppose you have 20 computer attached to one computer and server is containing all the information of all those 20 computers and server breaks down. So what's going to happen? Everything becomes so inaccessible and all people who are connected to the server, they are sitting idle and saying server not working. So that's another very big obstacle. So sometimes you might have visited banks, you might have visited airports with reservation and even when you are accessing the things, you are just hanged up for a while saying, oh, server is not working. So that's one another disadvantage of using network. Then of course, viruses, malwares, they are spread easily with the computer networking. Suppose there is one computer who got connected with some of the exterior device maybe the virus came from the internet and the moment that computer get connected with other computers with the network all the computer get affected by that malware that virus so that is another very big hurdle in case of networking moving further there is increased danger of hacking of the computer network. What is hacking? Hacking is actually gaining unauthorized access and someone else is using your data, accessing your data and taking the privacy. So this is another disadvantage of using network. So what are hackers? Hackers are the people who steal the data, who take unauthorized access to your computer, they are viewing your data, they are copying, they are creating uh, multiple copies of your data and they can be misused at times. So hacking of data is a very big problem when you are working on networking. So how to overcome these problems? Every problem has a solution. Similarly, we have a feature that is network security. Basically, networks have many advantages, but at the same time, data security is very important aspect that we have to take care of when we are working in network. So, in network, many users access the same data from the server and this data must be ensured security. There must be ensured security for the data that is being accessed by different users. So, in a network, data can get accidentally deleted sometimes. That In that case, what will you do? You have the backup feature. Sometimes, 
miscreants may manipulate your data and someone can hack or access the confidential data. So these are very, very common problems. So we have to take care of the network security. We have to provide network security. That means there must be proper backup of the data so that even the data get deleted, someone manipulated, you have the backup of it, right? So when you talk about network security, what is network security? They are all the activities which are designed to protect the usability and integrity of your network and data as well. So it includes both hardware and the software technologies and there are effective network security that manages the access to the network. So it targets variety of threats and stop them from entering or spreading in the network. This is basically controlled by the network administration and now we are talking about different types of network security. So first security is authentication security and next security is authorization security. Okay. So what is authenticity? It is basically done by designing a special user login name and a password is given to the corresponding user and the user is assigned the username and the password so that no one other can access your data. So with that password, with that username, only you are the authority. That is the reason we are saying that this is authentication. You are authenticated user of that login. So whatever work is done in that login, whether you are deleting some data, whether someone uh, uh, says that this data is transferred from this login ID, so that could be easily tracked out. So everyone becomes the authentic user of the data that is stored in that user ID login with certain login and password. Okay. Then we come at authorization. What is authorization? Here we are giving the rights of only read only access or sometimes write only access. And even we give the right of no access at all to the user. So sometimes that means some of the users are given only the right that you can only read the data. Some are the higher authorities are given the right that they can read the data, they can access the data, they can manipulate the data, they can make the changes whatever are required. And the third category is no access at all. So for certain users who are attached to the network, if we do not give them rights to access the data, on that particular node, on that particular computer, we will not be able to access certain data which is not authorized by the server. Okay, so all this work is done by the admin and to whom admin gives the right from their own server, only those people are actually getting the access depending on what sort of access we are providing to them. Okay. Now, there are certain network protocols which are to be followed and you know what happens when we do the communication. Communication is sending and receiving the information with the help of some medium. Now, here the medium is your computer and whenever two people communicate to each other, they talk in some same language. Now, what is the language? Language always has certain rules to be followed. In the same way, when you connect to computer and the two computer are communicating, we have certain rules of communicating with the two computers and these rules are called protocols. So basically we say that protocols are standard set of rules which are agreed by the computer access on a network and it helps in setting up the connection between the computers. So there are different, different kinds of uh, protocols to be followed that we'll be learning here. But why do we need protocols? That's another question that comes in our mind. So basically protocols enable the computer to communicate without any misinterpretation. And of course, they control the flow of data 
on the network as well. Now they help us to enhance the security of the data when we are traveling over the network. So data security is major part to be taken care of and this all is followed in these protocols. Now we are going to talk about what are the different types of protocols. So children many protocols are defined for the computer networking. We are going to talk about them one after another. Come to the first one that is called TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, TCP IP. It's, the, its full name is Transmission Control Protocol, Internet Protocol. Now here TCP IP is basically used by the computer to communicate over the internet. And TCP component just break down the data to be sent over the internet into small, small packets. And then IP component routes the packets. These packets which are made earlier, they are route to the specified IP address which is designate, which is its designation. And it ensures that packet goes to the right designation. Whatever is the proper destination, the packet is reaching to the proper destination where it has to be delivered. And at the receiving end, what's going to happen? TCP just collects and they reassemble. They combine the data. The data was broken into small, small pieces, packets. And this just reassemble the data and data is visible in the normal form, in the form in which it was originally delivered. Now coming to the next protocol, that is HTTP protocol. We call it Hypertext Transfer Protocol. What is Hypertext Transfer Protocol? It is set of protocols that allow the users of www, World Wide Web, to exchange the information that is found on the web pages. So whenever you find any information on web pages, you understand that it is always coming from HTTP. Right? And HTTP was initially invented by Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. Tim Berners-Lee has done a big contribution in field of computer. You might, you must study his life history, how he has worked and how he has brought up such a miraculous change in the world of computers. And this protocol is based on the client server model. Now, what happens when this data communication starts, the client server just initiates a request through HTTP protocol and send the request to the web server. And the client uses web browser, like what are the web browsers? You have Google Chrome, then you have Internet Explorer to just initiate the request. And the web server receives the request and process it. And this is how your entire data which you are requesting from the internet reaches your computer. It's with the help of HTTP. Okay, now we move further children. We come to HTTPS. How is uh, HTTPS? This S stands for security. So basically what happened when the data was being transferred by HTTP, it was not at all secure. So to provide the security to your HTTP data because it was open data, it could be easily destroyed, it could be easily stolen. So another work was done with another protocol that is called HTTPS. And this is where HTTPS is used and it is a secured version of HTTP. We say HTTPS is a secured version of HTTP. And in this protocol, the communication between the client and the server is protected and it, it just provides the security edge to your access to the data. Now we come at file transfer protocol. So basically file transfer protocol is required when you want to upload or download any file from the computer to from one computer to another computer and this protocol is based on the client server model. Okay and FTP uses the secured method of file transfers over the network. 
So whenever you are going to use FTP, that means it is a secure method of transferring the data. Now FTP, FTP client checks the authentication of the users by just asking them, what is your login? What is your password? And you are going to enter to your account only. And once the authentication is done, the files are uploaded or downloaded by the client and the access is given to your file from your FTP, that is file transfer protocol. This part is clear. Then we come to another advanced protocol that is used for mail transfer protocol and we say it is SMTP, that is simple mail transfer protocol. It is used to transfer the emails between the server and we use it when any email is sent by the user with the help of email client application that is it could be outlook express to the email server and it is also used when email is delivered from one server to another right after that we come to another protocol we call it pop it is post office protocol this protocol is used to download email from the email server and as soon as the email is downloaded, the protocol just deletes the email from their original server. And then we have a modified form of it, which is called POP3, Post Office Protocol 3, which is modified form of POP. Okay. Then we come at IMAP, that is Internet Message Access Protocol. This also help you to download the files, to send the mails, but unlike your POP, it does not delete the emails from the server and that may have been downloaded. That means, uh, like here, when the file, the email was downloaded, it was deleted from the server, but it still remains in the server. And for having the email, it uses more server resources like this space and CPU time in compare to POP. Because the files are not deleted, so it occupies more space. Moreover, as the email have on the um, other computer, on laptop or tablet, it was not possible with the POP. So that is the reason. Sometimes you are opening it on the phone also, and Android phones are in the hand of everyone. Sometimes you open your uh, email on the computer. Sometimes you are opening it on the desktop, laptop. So every time the access is not possible. So that's why the backup is kept in the main server as well. Okay. Now, another very interesting topic is how to access the file from the shared drive. So it's very important thing which we must know when we are talking about networking. Suppose there exists a file in the server and you want to give access, you want to uh, open the file from the shared drive, what steps are we going to do, right? So let's see, here are the steps. First, we go to the network icon of the desktop and the network window will appear. This is a network window which you could see here and here, we are going to see the different different places where the network actually existed. Now then in this network, uh, we are going to see the detail pane, what all are the contents inside the network. After that, we are going to find the required file which you want to share in the drive and if you want to open the file, we'll just double click on it. Then we have to copy the file. For that, just right click on that particular file. Here, once you right click on the file, your file will have this view. Okay. So, you are going to right click on the file and you could see a copy option over here. And you are going to see this is the copy option. So, what we will do, we will click on the copy option from this shortcut menu. And then in the view pane, this PC icon will have the storage device. So we are going to just paste it at that storage device by clicking on this paste option. So this particular file will be selected on the drive of your computer. It will reach your computer drive. 
okay so this is very important aspect when you are going to work on the networking a particular file is uploaded on the drive the link is shared with different people they'll just access the link and in that link to your surprise you know what happens we get the rights whether the user has only a right to read the file whether the user the who's opening on the different nodes of the network they have a right to uh, give comments on it or the some of them are given the rights to access and manipulate it so so interesting feature is there and we need to make proper use of it let's come on we are going to revise what we have learned so far so first thing is about the computer networking when we have group of computer connected together so that they could use the data and they could share the data that's called networking and the server what is server is the central computer or the electronic device to which all other nodes are on the computers are connected now what is node node is a computer or device that is attached to the network we call it node and yes the hardware required we need some special hardware when we are doing networking that is we need a network interface card we require gateways hubs are required routers modems then we need switches we require network cables also which will help you to access the network and we have learned about different type of network like lan is there wan is there man is there then we have campus area network we have pan personal area network and of course wireless local area network is there now various topologies we have learned that is <clears throat> they are ptp bus topology ring topology we did it in second video star mesh so this upper part was done in first video this all was done in second video and yes in third video we have learned about different network securities and what are the rules to be followed while we are going for the networking and we have learned about different types of network securities which are available for us that is called authentication security and authorization security so i believe the concepts are clear to you still when you have any doubt just go back with the videos and just review them that will be a real fun and exploring activity so see you with the new video till then goodbye and happy learning mm -hmm.